Okay guys, so in today's video we're going to be revisiting the Interlock B518. This time we're going to be giving it a bit of a kneecapping because we're going to be disabling rebar, something that all Intel graphics cards should have enabled. And we're going to see what kind of performance hit this card actually gets. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, Intel do have one requirement for their Interlock graphics cards, and that is you must enable resizable bar on your motherboard. Resizable bar effectively allows your CPU to have full access to the VRAM on your graphics card instead of chunking things up, so it should actually make things a little bit faster. But for 99% of graphics cards out there, it doesn't really affect the performance that much to even worry about. If you are one of those people on a platform prior to Intel's ninth generation, unfortunately, you're out of luck because they just didn't support this functionality. And even if you are on something like a Z390, with a 9th gen CPU, you still might need to update your BIOS to even get it. So it's definitely worth doing if you can, because it's always worth keeping your BIOSes up to date anyway and getting that new functionality. But if you are on something like an AMD or Nvidia graphics card, performance wise, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. But if you do want to upgrade to something like the B580, definitely get that BIOS downloaded and get it installed as soon as you can. To see how much of a performance hit we get by disabling rebar, we've actually loaded our B580 back up into our benching rig. This one does have an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D with 32 gigabytes of DDR5. So of course we do have access to rebar, but we've had to go into the BIOS to disable it. There's always a quick and easy way to check if your graphics card is going to be using resizable bar, or at least if your platform has it enabled. Intel have given you a built-in tool. All you need to do is go to the Intel graphics software and right on the front page it will tell you all about your system here it tells you what kind of CPU you've got at the bottom and then under your graphics card it does say we've got the Interlock B580 graphics 12 gigabytes of VRAM it is a discrete graphics card you would have a, like an iGPU listed there if you had an Intel processor and it says resizable bar is in red with an X that actually means that it's disabled and we did that through the BIOS it would normally turn green if it's enabled and that's definitely what you want to look for and it's a very easy way of being able to know being able to resolve the issue if it says that it's not enabled when you have enabled it is a different one but definitely go check out their website because they do have some useful tips and hints and tricks to be able to get things working again but as has worked perfectly fine here now of course to be able to see what kind of performance drop we get we need to test a game and the game that we're going to be choosing first is cyberpunk 2077 now this is a very popular game still and lots of people would still want to play this so if they're thinking about upgrading to a b580 and they don't have rebar are they going to be in for much luck i don't really know when we originally tested this game we actually got a pretty decent result out of this graphics card we got around an average of 136 frames per second with a one percent low of 102 that is a high fps experience but as the game is just loaded up now we'll just jump straight in and we'll see what kind of performance we get resetting some stats here we can see that everything has dropped dramatically if this is the right setting we'll just go and hide around the corner from these enemies and then we'll just head over to the menu system and see our original testing was around 1080p with a high preset so we'll just go over to the settings now we'll go to our video settings we are running in 1080p we'll go to our graphics setting it's set to custom but i do believe that is a high preset so we've gone to a high preset and we're going to disable all the fancy tools we'll just apply those settings there and we'll get back into game now we're currently getting an average of around 66 62 frames per second with a one percent low of around 40 so of course we've nearly halved our performance here or over halved our performance actually it's below half we're now getting around 55 frames per second with a one percent low of 29 it's not unplayable i will admit the game is still running perfectly smooth everything still looks really good but if you were getting this kind of performance the first thing that you'd want to do is drop the settings and of course why would you have to do that if your graphics card's really got the power in there so i think this is a good demonstration of how much you can really lose by disabling something like resizable bar or in probably most people's cases not even enabling it at all even though you've got it it does increase a little bit as we go into darker areas but generally like i say we're just under half the performance you would get with a resizer bar so that is just not a good result all through the graphics card isn't even getting to its full potential either we're currently running at around 67 percent utilization so it's really affecting our gameplay and performance here something i wasn't really expecting too much to but of course this is what you expect if you don't follow intel's rules this is cyberpunk 2077 you are really going to get affected on your performance if you don't have a resizable bar enabled. So let's try another game, something new as well. 
and see if that affects that game as well just as much. Now the second game that we're going to be testing is Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. It is quite a new title, it's very demanding on systems, particularly the B580, but during our normal testing it actually performed extremely well. We managed to get an average of around 89 frames per second with a 1% low just over 60, I think it was about 61, 62. So again in 1080p with a high preset, more than playable and it actually provided a pretty decent experience as well. But let's head into game and then we'll go over to our settings in our options menu we'll go to our video settings here we're currently running in full screen 1080p and then if we go down to our graphics quality we are set in a high graphics quality with no fancy tools on everything is native so let's go back to the game reset some stats and see where we are now again we have dropped our performance here but it's not as bad as the uh cyberpunk 2077 we're currently getting an average here of around 57 frames per second which is still more than playable it's not the 89 we got before but our one percent lower is really taking a dip here if you just take a quick look at our frame time graph you can see these little blips here this is micro stuttering and it's basically the graphics card trying to keep up with things we are utilizing the graphics card at around 90 percent so we haven't got the 99 percent we would have if we had rebar enabled and the 1% lows are still dropping and they're still dropping. They're around 20 frames per second at the moment and we're not really in anything demanding. So let's run into this village here where there's a lot of things going on and see what happens. We're still getting those blips there on the frame time graph and we've got a frame time of around 20 milliseconds, which is not good. That was very low in our previous testing. We've still got those regular blips happening and our average FPS is still around 56, 57, 58. We're just basically maxing out here at around 60 FPS and that is as far as it can actually get. We just did see 61 frames per second, but it didn't last very long. On average, we are getting around 58 frames per second. So like I say, in terms of averages, the game is still more than playable. But those 1% lows are really affecting things when it comes to micro stuttering, particularly if you turn the character very fast. You just get this kind of de slight delay as you start to do it and then a little bit of stuttering at the end. It's it's not a good experience all over. I think this is a good example of a game where your averages don't really get affected too much. But when it comes to those 1% lows and how smooth the game is actually going to be, it's really detrimental to the system. So definitely this is a game you will want rebar enabled on because again, you're going to be losing so much performance from your graphics card. It's just totally not going to be worth the purchase at all. So as you can tell from the two games that we've looked at from Cyberpunk 2077, we reduce our performance by just over a half. But even though the game is still reasonably playable with the uh, results that we got, Indiana Jones is not as bad when it comes to your average frame times. But when it comes to your 1% lows, it's quite detrimental. And that regular heartbeat of a of a jump in our frame time graph is really affecting things because you can feel the game stutter as you go across. That is probably how the graphics card is chunking up its memory to be able to produce this because this game is very kind of VRAM demanding. So now what we need to do is actually test all the other games before. We'll put them for the rings and then we'll discuss some of the results that we get. Okay, so after testing all of the other games in our test suite, we've actually got some pretty interesting results here because the performance drop is all dependent on the games that you play. Playing Alan Wake 2 with an interlock graphics card with rebar turned off will actually half your performance here. With our original testing, we managed to get an average of 56 frames per second with a 1% low of 42, but with rebar turned off, this actually dove all the way down to around 33 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 14. That just made the game completely unplayable, particularly for those low 1% lows. It was very stuttery. At and full being a new release didn't actually get affected as much as I thought it would be. With our original testing we managed to get an average of 150 frames per second with a 1% low of 110 but with rebar turned off we managed to still get an average of around 119 frames per second with a 1% low of 54. Now those 1% lows of course have gone down by around 50% but the game is still reasonably smooth and it looks fantastic too. I would still say that you are getting a high FPS experience there but of course you are still leaving a lot of performance on the table. Dead Island 2 was another game that was still extremely playable even without rebar turned on. With our original testing we managed to get 140 frames per second with a 1% low of 87. With rebar turned off we managed to get an average of 78 frames per second with a 1% low of 26. Again it was that low 1% low that would actually cause stuttering throughout the game but because
because the game is reasonably slow paced to be honest you can actually get away with playing it doom eternal did see a huge decrease in performance across both the average and one percent lows but because that game actually runs in such a high fps experience anyway you probably wouldn't notice our original testing we managed to get an average of 287 frames per second with a one percent low of 207 and with rebar turned off we still managed to get an average of 201 frames per second with a one percent low of 162 like i say you probably won't even notice with that game because it still ran silky smooth with rebar turned off but it's not the greatest example of modern gaming anymore and with all the others you are still leaving a lot of performance on the table probably just not worth buying this graphics card at all particularly if that is a type of game that you want to play because you'll get a very similar performance from an older amd radian rx 580. red dead redemption 2 saw a huge decrease in both the average and the one percent lows during our testing with rebar turned on you can get an average of 137 frames per second with the one percent low of 105 and then turning it off you will decrease those by over half it's around a 70 percent decrease here of now getting around 45 frames per second on average with a one percent low of 28 that game in my opinion just deserves more so definitely don't play that game with an interlock graphics card with rebar turned off spider-man remastered again was another game that really suffered in the one percent lows more than anything with the original testing we managed to get an average of 188 frames per second with a one percent low of 81 with rebar turned off we could only manage to get an average of 82 frames per second which was more than playable but with the one percent low dropping to 21 here again the game became stuttery and you got a lot of micro stutters throughout particularly when swinging through the city at fast pace so it took away from the experience completely space marine 2 without rebar was completely unplayable during our original testing we managed to get an average of 93 frames per second with a one percent low 48 which was actually pretty decent for the b580 considering how demanding that game is but with rebar turned off we could only manage to get an average of 40 frames per second with a one percent low of 14 again it's that one percent low there that just makes the game completely unplayable because as soon as you get a lot of enemies on the screen everything just goes into a bit of a stutter fest stalker 2 was probably the worst performing game out of the lot with rebar turned off in our original testing we managed to get 84 frames per second on average with a one percent low of 48 which was not bad to be honest it would meant that the game was very playable particularly for a budget graphics card but with rebar turned off those dive all the way down to 16 frames per second on average with a one percent low of seven that meant that you were basically playing a slideshow at this point and it was completely unplayable so definitely if stalker 2 is a game that you want to play on an interlock graphics card make sure you've got rebar enabled across all the tests we did we saw an average decrease Decrease of around 48% on the average frames per second and then when it comes to the 1% lows we saw an average decrease of around 67% which generally means that if you are going to be using your interlock graphics card particularly the b580 without rebar enabled you're going to be losing around 50% of the performance across everything with this graphics card so it's definitely not worth it it means that it becomes one of the most expensive graphics cards when it comes to price per frame and it's definitely something that you don't want but now we know we've tested it and we know why intel do say don't run the graphics card without rebar enabled because it's basically going to destroy all of your performance it's really cool to see these kind of things and i think we're going to be checking out a few more things with this exact same graphics card so don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to be able to watch them we're going to be testing it with some older systems things that still do have rebar but have extremely weak cpus you won't want to miss that let me know in the comments below what you think of the interlock graphics cards without rebar enabled should people still go out and buy it even if they don't have rebar enabled in my opinion probably not but then again it is the cheapest modern graphics card that you will be able to get out there so maybe it could be worth it if it still plays the games that you want to play and they play them perfectly fine but you're kind of investing for the future because the next thing you will upgrade is your platform i suppose in that instance it could be actually useful and i'm sure as always i'll catch you guys in the next one